Life has thrown me a curveball, something that's not exactly a problem but more of a tough choice. My mom and sister have been leaning on me for years, taking advantage of my kindness. But now it's gone too far. I'm torn because cutting them off means they might struggle financially, which feels harsh. Yet, I'm exhausted from always meeting their demands. Let me paint you a picture of who I am. I'm a 35-year-old woman, happily married with two kids, living in Ohio for six years now. However, my roots trace back to Houston. My childhood wasn't a walk in the park. My parents split when I was just 10. Dad accused mom of infidelity and left, leaving behind a cloud of uncertainty regarding my sister's paternity. Dad wasn't involved much, except for occasional school fees and gifts. Mom got to keep the house, and Dad funded my education, but not my sister's, which raised eyebrows. Despite the rocky start, I reconnected with Dad during high school, and we built a strong bond. His passing last year left a void. Mom's resentment towards our closeness grew, especially after Dad named me as his sole heir, despite his remarriage. This inheritance wasn't just a windfall. It symbolized years of Dad's support, including my education. It's no secret that Mom and Sis weren't thrilled about it. Their envy simmered beneath the surface. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Ever since they learned about the inheritance, they've been circling like vultures, asking for financial help. This isn't new. They've always relied on me when they hit rough patches. But this time, it feels different. It's not just about helping out. It's about them constantly taking without consideration for my own family's needs. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm at a crossroads. On one hand, I want to break free from this cycle of dependency, but on the other, I fear the guilt of leaving them in a tough spot. It's a dilemma that's been weighing heavily on my mind, and I'm not sure which path to take. Since I started working, I've been helping out my mom and sister financially. As my income grew, so did their needs. I don't feel like I owe them anything, but because they're family and they don't earn much, I feel obligated to assist them. While we may not be deeply emotionally attached, they've never treated me poorly. A while back, my mom called me about renovating our family home. The place has been falling apart since my dad left, and they can't afford to fix it. Mom hinted at wanting money from me for the renovations, but we didn't directly discuss it. Instead, I started avoiding her calls, feeling uncomfortable with the situation. After numerous attempts, Mom finally confronted me about the issue, admitting that living in the deteriorating house was becoming unsafe, especially during bad weather. She asked for $200,000, which I couldn't afford to lend. Reluctantly, I offered $100,000, feeling pressured and irritated by her request. Later, I regretted my impulsive decision. My husband suggested lending the money in installments and monitoring the progress of the renovations. So, I activated an old bank account in Houston and transferred $20,000 into it, giving mom access. I didn't transfer the money directly to her account, fearing she might misuse it. Now, as I continue lending money for the renovations, doubts linger. Will mom really pay me back? Or is this just the beginning of endless financial demands? It's a tough spot to be in, unsure if my kindness will be repaid or exploited. Despite my husband's skepticism, I hold on to hope that mom will honor her promise. But deep down, I know it's a risky gamble. I've already handed over $40,000, and I've decided that's the end of the line. It's become clear to me that my mom and sister's niceness was just a facade for my money, but I never imagined they'd stoop to such levels of deceit to milk me dry. If only they'd been upfront about their intentions, it wouldn't sting so much. Recently, I found out about my sister's upcoming wedding, not from my family, but from a friend. Apparently, she's planning a lavish affair with the help of my friend's husband, a wedding planner. It's a spectacle worth $100,000, and I'm left wondering how she managed to finance such extravagance. What stings even more is the realization that while they're splurging on her wedding, they've been emptying the bank account I've been sending money to for the so-called house renovations. 
When I called mom to inquire about the progress, she claimed the renovations had started, but it was clear she was lying. I couldn't shake the feeling of disgust at the thought of them spending a fortune on her wedding while simultaneously taking money from me under false pretenses. It's a betrayal that cuts deep, leaving me questioning the sincerity of our familial bonds. I contemplated flying down to Houston to see things for myself, but I quickly realized it wouldn't solve anything. Instead, I reached out to my aunt, my father's sister, who lived nearby. She confirmed that my sister's wedding was indeed the talk of the neighborhood, but neither she nor my father's side of the family were invited. Mom's disdain for Dad's family explained the snub. As my aunt described the transformation of our old, dilapidated house into a sparkling venue for my sister's wedding, I felt a wave of disorientation wash over me. Just a few years ago, that same house was falling apart, a testament to my mom and sister's hard work just to make ends meet. Now, it had undergone a miraculous makeover, fitting for a grand celebration. The pieces started to fall into place. Months ago, mom had asked me for money for a knee transplant, a request I'd fulfilled without hesitation. But now, as I probed for details, her evasiveness became apparent. She couldn't recall the hospital or clinic where the surgery supposedly took place, and her excuses grew flimsier with each question. When her phone mysteriously went offline, and my messages remained unread, the truth became undeniable. The money meant for her medical procedure had been diverted to fund the house renovations, and the funds I'd been sending for those renovations were, in reality, financing my sister's extravagant wedding. The realization hit me like a ton of bricks. Even more distressing was the revelation that my sister's engagement had been staged on the very lawn of our family home, adorned with lies and overflowing with wine. It was a mockery of everything I thought our family stood for. Realizing the extent of their deception, I made a bold decision. I ghosted them. No more responses to calls, texts, or any form of contact. Even when my mom reached out and even my sister, who hadn't bothered to call in years, tried to get in touch, I remained silent. Enough was enough. I was done being manipulated and lied to. It didn't matter that I earned more or that dad left me an inheritance while neglecting them. Their actions crossed a line, exploiting me with their deceitful tactics. So, I pledged to ruin my mom's princess's big day, the wedding they schemed to fund with my money. But then, my husband, in a moment of weakness, responded to my mom's call. He spilled the beans, revealing the truth about their deception. I was furious. I wanted them to suffer for their fraud, but his honesty ruined my plans. Mom bombarded my phone with apologies, claiming it was all a misunderstanding. She said she'd borrowed the money for house repairs and was now repaying it. I demanded the truth, and finally, she confessed. My sister had concocted the plan for a grand wedding, and they needed my money to pull it off. They'd fabricated the story of house renovations, knowing I wouldn't suspect a thing. Mom claimed they didn't want to directly ask for money, as if that made their deceit any less despicable. Confronting her with the truth, I watched as she faltered. She couldn't deny the reality any longer. The money meant for her knee transplant had indeed been used for house repairs. But even as she tried to justify their actions, I saw through her lies. Their excuses crumbled under the weight of their deception. It was clear they'd been planning this elaborate charade for a long time. And now, faced with the truth, there was no hiding from the consequences of their actions. The realization of how my own mother manipulated me for her benefit hit me like a ton of bricks. When she called, panicked, claiming an urgent need for a transplant, I transferred the money without a second thought. But deep down, I was crying. How could she deceive me like this? Despite their financial struggles, it didn't justify their manipulation and emotional extortion. After learning the truth, I cried for hours, feeling a profound sense of loss. My father, who had always shown genuine love and care, felt painfully absent. 
And when mom audaciously asked for the remaining amount to continue with the wedding preparations, I was disgusted. There was no remorse in her tone, only a selfish desire for money. Blocking them was the only way to protect myself from their relentless demands. I even threatened my husband, determined not to let them back into our lives. I confided in my aunt, who informed me about the upcoming wedding. Though I didn't disclose the details, I knew they were struggling to put it together, and frankly, I felt no sympathy. Despite their pleas and accusations, I stood my ground. On the wedding day, mom's final voicemail disowning me broke my heart. I sobbed in front of my husband, feeling the weight of their betrayal. People might judge me for ruining my sister's big day, but they never considered the pain of being used and deceived by my own family. When I learned that the wedding was on the verge of cancellation due to unpaid expenses, I felt a pang of guilt. Despite everything, I couldn't shake the feeling of responsibility for the chaos. Part of me even considered transferring the remaining amount to salvage the event, but ultimately, I knew it wasn't my burden to bear. Reflecting on the turmoil caused by my family's deceit, I realized that my mother's disownment might actually be a blessing in disguise. Why continue to do so much for people who ultimately turn their backs on you? Despite the guilt and sadness, I knew my actions were a reaction to their malicious behavior. Taking a break with my kids, trying to distract myself from the chaos, seemed like the best course of action. However, when my friend called again, I learned of the aftermath of the wedding debacle. The embarrassment my family caused was immense. They hadn't even paid the promised amount to cover the expenses they'd committed to. Hearing this filled me with a mix of embarrassment and frustration. Despite my friend's reassurance that she didn't blame me, I couldn't shake the feeling of shame. Yet, my husband's words brought clarity. They had brought this upon themselves by resorting to deceitful means to impress others. Perhaps my mother's disownment was a necessary separation from their lies and manipulation. In retrospect, I realized that a true mother wouldn't stoop to such levels of deception. My mother's actions painted her as a snake, willing to betray her own flesh and blood for her selfish desires. With my husband's support, I felt relieved to have distanced myself from their toxic influence. As for giving my mother the money, the answer became clear. No, I wouldn't have. Their actions proved that they couldn't be trusted with such generosity. It's one thing to help family in need, but it's another to enable their deceitful behavior. In the end, it was a harsh lesson learned, but one that ultimately led to liberation from their manipulative grasp. Reflecting on the tumult caused by my family's deceit, I've come to see my mother's disownment as a blessing in disguise. After all, why continue to extend myself for people who ultimately turn their backs on me? The guilt and sadness lingered, but I recognized that my actions were a response to their malicious behavior. Seeking solace, I took a break with my kids, attempting to distract myself from the chaos. However, when my friend reached out again, I learned of the aftermath of the wedding debacle. The embarrassment my family caused was palpable. Worse still, they hadn't even fulfilled their financial commitments, leaving a trail of broken promises. Despite my friend's reassurance that she didn't hold me accountable, I couldn't shake the feeling of shame. Yet, my husband's words provided clarity. Their downfall was a consequence of their own deceitful actions, attempting to impress others by any means necessary. In hindsight, it became evident that a true mother wouldn't stoop to such levels of deception. My mother's actions painted her as someone willing to betray her own flesh and blood for her own selfish desires. With my husband's unwavering support, I felt relieved to have distanced myself from their toxic influence. Regarding the question of whether I would have given my mother the money, the answer was resolute, no. Their actions had proven that they couldn't be trusted with such generosity. While aiding family in need is one thing, enabling their deceitful behavior is quite another. It was a harsh lesson learned, but one that ultimately liberated me from their manipulative grasp. As I reflected further on the events that unfolded, I couldn't help but wonder about the depths of my mother's deception. How could someone who was supposed to nurture, 
and protect me resort to such manipulative tactics. It was a sobering realization that shook me to my core. The disownment stung, of course. It was a rejection I never expected to face from my own mother. Yet, strangely enough, it also brought a sense of relief. No longer would I be entangled in her web of lies and false promises. No longer would I be manipulated into handing over my hard-earned money under false pretenses. In the days that followed, I found myself grappling with conflicting emotions. On one hand, there was a lingering sense of betrayal and hurt. How could my own family deceive me in such a callous manner? On the other hand, there was a growing sense of liberation. I was free from their toxic influence, free to chart my own path without constantly worrying about their demands and expectations. With each passing day, I grew more determined to move forward, to build a life untethered from the deceit and manipulation of my past. It wasn't easy, of course. The scars left by my family's betrayal ran deep, and healing would take time. But I was determined to emerge from this ordeal stronger and more resilient than ever before. As for the question of whether I would have given my mother the money, the answer remained a firm no. While part of me still felt a sense of obligation to help family in need, I knew that enabling their deceptive behavior would only perpetuate the cycle of dysfunction. It was time to break free from the chains of guilt and obligation and forge a new path forward one guided by honesty, integrity, and self-respect. As I delved deeper into the complexities of my family's betrayal, I found myself pondering the intricate dynamics that had shaped our relationships over the years. Growing up, I had always felt a sense of duty towards my mother and sister, driven by a deep-seated desire to support them through their struggles. Despite the fractured nature of our family unit, I clung to the belief that blood ties were sacrosanct, that familial bonds transcended all else. Yet, as the layers of deception began to unravel, I was forced to confront a harsh truth. My mother and sister had exploited my goodwill for their own selfish gain. Their elaborate schemes, designed to extract money from me under false pretenses, shattered the very foundation of trust upon which our relationship was built. It was a betrayal of the highest order, one that left me reeling with a potent mix of anger, disbelief, and heartbreak. The disownment, delivered with a callousness that cut straight to the core of my being, served as a stark reminder of the tenuous nature of our familial ties. In one fell swoop, I was cast out from the very unit that I had sacrificed so much to uphold. And yet, amidst the pain and turmoil, there was a glimmer of something resembling liberation. For the first time in years, I found myself unshackled from the burdens of obligation and expectation that had weighed me down for so long. No longer was I beholden to the whims of a mother who saw me as nothing more than a means to an end, or a sister whose ambitions blinded her to the consequences of her actions. I was free to forge my own path, to pursue my own dreams and aspirations without fear of judgment or retribution. Of course, the road ahead would not be easy. The wounds inflicted by my family's betrayal ran deep, and healing would take time. But with each passing day, I felt a renewed sense of strength and resilience coursing through my veins. I was determined to rise above the wreckage of my past, to carve out a future defined not by the deceit of others, but by the integrity of my own actions. As for the question of whether I would have given my mother the money, the answer remained a resounding no. While part of me still wrestled with feelings of guilt and obligation, I knew deep down that enabling their deceptive behavior would only perpetuate the cycle of dysfunction that had plagued our family for far too long. It was time to break free from the chains of the past and embrace the promise of a brighter tomorrow, one built on a foundation of honesty, integrity, and self-respect.